Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome back to a new episode of How to Be a Manga Artist. Now, I know it has been a while since I've uploaded a new episode, but also just uploaded in general. I have had a lot going on. Work has started back up for me, so I've been really, really busy. But also, I've been cranking out chapter 14 of my manga Chikara for you guys. So, just trying to get back in the swing of things and kind of figure out my new schedule because I have a lot a lot going on now. So in episode 6, the last episode that we did for how to be a manga artist, I went over manga software. But today I'm going to be going over some traditional aspects that you can use to do manga covers, manga illustrations, and more if you still like working traditionally. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into it. So if you guys have been following this channel for a while, you know that I did a couple of videos a while back talking about how to make manga covers. There was two episodes because it was they were pretty long um, to show you guys kind of my process on how to do them. And even with my process, there's still so much more that you can do with it. It's just my style and the way I want my stuff to look. That's my process for it. If you haven't checked out those episodes, the link is on the screen now. I advise you watch those if you are specifically trying to learn how to make traditional looking manga covers, if you don't like making your illustrations digitally but if you've already seen that video let's just do a little crash course all the illustration materials that I'm gonna be showing you guys and telling you guys are gonna be able to be bought online obviously on Amazon but you also can buy them in person in stores at Hobby Lobby Michaels or whatever your local art store has so I'm sure you guys have the basics you guys have pencils you guys have needed erasers you guys have rulers you guys have stencils you guys have the basic stuff for creating manga traditionally if that is what you already do or you just like to draw traditionally you already have this these materials but if you don't I advise you go get them if you're trying to get that traditional manga cover look or manga illustration look like I do for my illustrations so, like I said, we're going to do a little crash course. So my process in creating manga covers or manga illustrations is very, very simple. I draw most of my illustrations digitally. I get the sketch done, I get the ink done, and then I print it off, and then I color the inks. I color it like an actual illustration, and then I scan it back in, and then I edit it more within Clip Studio to give it final touches, you know, power effects, maybe touch up on skin, maybe background stuff. It just really depends on what I'm going for for that illustration. If you're wondering about the brand of markers that I use in general, I use Copic, I use Prismacolor, and I use Art Marker. All of these are personal preference. It really depends on your style of coloring with these type of markers. Some people only like using the brushes, other people don't mind using the chisel or maybe the nib part of the pen. It really just depends on your preference when you're using these type of markers. For me, I like to use all of them because I figure they all do the same thing and I can color just as well with a Copic marker than I can with an art marker from Amazon. So it just really depends on you and, and what you like. If you really like Copic and you only want to use Copic, then go for it. If you like Prismacolor, same thing, go for it. But if you like a mix like I do, go for it. Collect a bunch that way, you, even if, because I know Copic can be expensive and Prismacolor, so obviously find things that work within your budget. Don't spend a lot of money on things that in the long run you might not even use because you might feel like I actually do better working digitally than traditionally so why did I buy all this stuff so work with your own price range and get what you enjoy most so I can say with my process on how I do my covers and illustrations it does in a way make it to where I can never really mess up because since I'm working uh, digitally first and I get all of my details and inks and everything done digitally and I print it off to color even if I mess up on the coloring aspect I can either do two things like if it's a really really bad mess up I can obviously just reprint it and recolor it start over but if it's just minor errors like maybe I messed up on some coloring and it went over the ink lines or maybe this one color wasn't the right one I used all that can be fixed digitally once I scan it back in so with this process that I'm doing instead of working completely from traditional like sketching it on paper inking it on paper then coloring it which if you mess up you've messed up the entire illustration my process actually helps you because like I said you have two options either you can reprint it and start over if it's a really bad mess up or you can just edit it in post when you scan it back in so I don't have the best scanner personally my scanner is okay so for me my digital editing is very tedious I have to edit a lot because even if I color it really really well 
my scanner is sometimes terrible and it likes to make things really really bright even though I didn't color it that way so I have to adjust a lot digitally when I'm doing this technique but that's because I know my scanner I know my printer I know all of that so when you guys are doing it if you're working with a specific scanner or you know maybe you have a really really expensive one that does amazing you know learn your equipment and learn what settings you need to adjust and change that way when you scan in your art it's less work on post rather than what you know what I have to do and I'm just used to it I'm just using me as an example so I, I know a big question is you know why would I do traditional when I can just do digital for everything because there's brushes for everything and then that's true there are brushes for a lot of stuff there's tutorials out there on how to get your digital artwork to look traditional um, it just like I said, it like I said it always it always depends on on you on if you like to have that very traditional look and you feel more comfortable trying to replicate that digitally then you know go for it no one's stopping you if that's like your work process and you can get stuff done that way go for it but for me personally I like to have my look look super super traditional and I, I like to have copies of my artwork that I've worked on so I can look back and be like oh wow I remember when I did that even if it is traditional, like I, I, I keep all my stuff. So for me, I like that traditional look, so I'm going to try my best to replicate that traditionally. I don't want to basically do digital for everything because I like to, personally, like I said, just keep my roots because that's what I started from was traditional. So I always like every now and then, like with the Get to Know Me series when I'm drawing my multiple characters and their updated styles, like I want to keep drawing and coloring them traditionally because it keeps the skill set fresh. And I also, I, you also have to remember that I grew up during the time where most manga covers, I mean, and most of them still are done traditionally, but a lot of them are done digitally now. Um, I just grew up, that, that was the look that I, that I loved the most. You know, most of Kishimoto's work was done traditionally, whether it be illustrations or manga covers, Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, all these, all these guys did traditional Copic marker illustration stuff for their covers. So for me, that was what I aspired to learn how to do and how to make my stuff look. Like I said, if you don't like that look, or if you do like that look and you don't like the hassle of markers and you just want to do it digitally, there are ways to do it. There is a video on the screen now that does a pretty good job of showing you guys how to do your markers and stuff and, and how to make your, your artwork digitally look traditional by using Photoshop and some other assets and stuff. So there are resources out there. You guys just have to find them. So at the end of the day, like I always tell you guys, figure out what you like about your artwork and, and your art process and, and work from there. There's no one way of doing this. There's no, it has to be all digital or it has to be all traditional. Mix and match, figure some stuff out. If, if for example, if you like doing your, your toning for your manga traditionally and scanning it in, go for it. If you like doing it digitally, go for it. If you like doing your paneling digitally and then drawing it traditionally and scanning, like there is no, there is no order to this guys it's literally how you want because at the end of the day your manga has to look how you want it to look and if you want it to have a very specific aesthetic or a very specific style you're going for mix and match because it's going to help you out in the long run instead of you trying to just do it one way you know mix and match experiment it's all about experimentation so that's pretty much the end of this video guys i know it was really really quick not a lot of information more of just encouragement and just some some practical tips for you guys like i said i've done videos on how to do manga covers specifically those are those were on the screen but they're also in the description below i've also gone over some videos in the past talking about copics and, and more in depth about those prices and you know how it affects your artwork and all that kind of stuff i have those videos as well in the description definitely go check those out i hope you enjoyed this time lapse of me drawing Beatty from my manga chikara this actually this illustration was actually originally going to be for get to know series but i decided since he has not been officially he's been officially introduced but in terms of just who he is and all that stuff i'm waiting until he's officially introduced in the manga which should be in chapter 16 um, coming very very soon and then i'll do an, another illustration of him probably a get to know on him in the future it won't be like really really close but in the future because i want you guys to get to know him through the story rather than through me talking about him right now at this moment and that's all for me guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope like i said it encouraged you it kind of gave you something to think about if you have any questions about anything whether it's digital whether it's traditional whether it's anything regarding manga definitely ask me in the comments i always try to get back to you guys with the best information and resources that i can give you guys from what i know and what i've experienced 
I hope you guys have a great rest of the day, week, wherever you are in the world. You guys are awesome. I appreciate all the support over all of my social media platforms. Make sure to check out my Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And follow on all my platforms if you haven't. Big things are coming. Big announcements are on the way. Stay tuned, and I will catch you guys for the next video. Peace.